Everyone has been in that spot before where you want to be better at something, whether it's a game, a skill, business, or even a relationship. You've tried everything, you feel like you should be improving, but for some reason, things seem to be staying the same. Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline, and I was gonna wait a bit before making a part two of my last video about my method for learning anything quickly, but the response was just so big, and I got so many questions about it that I just had to make this right away. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can check out what I'm talking about in the card or description. Now, that video was in more of a vloggy rant style format, so I wanted to dial things back and make this discussion a bit calmer and just play some gameplay footage in the background. Uh, I've been playing some Splitgate recently, which is basically Portal meets Halo, and it's actually been really fun. But anyway, the number one question I got from last video is this. Sky, I've tried all that stuff already, and I haven't seen any improvement. I'm still silver in Overwatch, I still can't get motivated to exercise, you know, whatever it is. Now, my last video painted it sort of an idealistic path to learning something without going into what to do when you hit a roadblock. So that's what this video is about. What happens when you're trying to learn something and you hit it right, you hit a roadblock. Now, I can usually tell exactly what the issue is simply from the way someone phrases this type of issue to me. Like someone messaged me on Discord, I 90% of the time know exactly what it is right away just based off of how they introduce it. Now, there's really three categories it breaks down into. The first goes something like this. All right, I feel like I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm still not seeing results. Now, for example, a League of Legends player might say, I think I'm playing like a diamond ADC, but I'm still stuck in gold. Or someone getting into shape might say, I think I'm on a good diet and I go to the gym, but I'm not seeing any results. This particular issue is a case of having missed the mark on the vision you had for success when you first set out on your goal. Remember, the way it works is you set a goal and then you do research to allow you to visualize exactly what you need to look like to achieve that goal. So if you want to be, I don't know, a diamond ADC in League of Legends, you need to have a clear picture of how a diamond ADC plays and then try to match that. In this case, the individual was simply wrong when they first established this vision. Maybe they thought a diamond ADC player plays a certain way but wound up missing a lot of important things. This sort of thing can very easily happen, especially when it's the sort of skill that doesn't actually have a ton of content. For example, nothing is gonna tell you exactly how to succeed in your business. You'll see a lot of advice that might help, but there isn't anything you'll ever be able to look up to and say, oh yeah, I just need to do that and I'll be rich. If that was the case, everyone would be rich, right? So in that case, chances are your first vision of what you need to achieve, uh, it'll probably be really wrong. So how do you fix this? Well. Here you have three options and number one and two kind of really go together. So they're almost the same thing, but number one is to start comparing yourself. If you think you're a grandmaster level Genji player, but you're stuck in diamond, take a recording of one of your games and put it right next to a recording of an actual grandmasters game and note down all the differences. Repeat this a few times until you have some common differences between your play and the grandmasters play all listed out. Now take this list and use it to construct a new vision of what you think GM gameplay should look like. Then work towards that. If you hit everything, your new vision should bring you up to GM or at least much closer than you were before. Option number two is to do some self-made research. Reinvent the wheel, I guess you might say, or sometimes just invent the wheel because it hasn't been invented yet. If comparison isn't enough, it's usually because there just isn't anything to really compare to. So you need to try to just intuit what you can improve on with your own critical thinking skills. High ranking players in games often don't have anyone much higher to compare themselves to, right? If you're a challenger, sure, you can look at the top challenger player, but if you're a top challenger player, who do you have to look at, right? Or some people have special circumstances making other examples not applicable to their situation. Here, you need to carefully go through whatever it is, whether it's your gameplay recordings, your business numbers, your code, whatever it is, and nitpick to find places you feel you can theoretically improve in. This can often be really hard because let's be honest, if it were that easy, people would just do it, right? Everyone would just, oh, I know exactly what's wrong. So this is where, unless you happen to have a knack for it or you happen to be able to just get it right in your first week or so of trying it out, maybe this is where you need number three, which is to get a coach if you can. 
Now, the whole point of a coach is to have an expert who can provide you with a perfect vision of where you need to go to accomplish your goals. They're not gonna make you smarter, they're not gonna make you better. What they're going to do is they're going to fix your learning path, right? They'll basically give you a flawless path that you can trust, at least hopefully if they're a good coach, right? Now in Overwatch, it might be pointing out a bad aiming habit um, you never realized, or a personal trainer who can fix your bad form that you never knew you had while you were lifting weights. Depending on what the thing is, finding a coach can be as easy as joining a free Discord channel. There are plenty of resources in popular games like Overwatch, League, or Counter-Strike that just people coach you for free. Other times you'll have to pay a bit, and other times they don't even exist. Business coaching, for example, is almost always a scam. If these people were good at business, it's just more profitable to go and build their own business or enhance the business that they already have instead of teaching it to someone else. The same can't be said for trainers or video games. Being grandmaster doesn't make you money, being ripped doesn't make you money, but teaching people how to get there can definitely make you money. So just make sure you think about the incentives that your coach has to know if they're legit or not. So to recap real quick, before we move on to the next thing, when you feel like you're doing everything right, but you still aren't getting anywhere, you need to focus on realigning your target vision with what it needs to be. That takes careful scrutiny of your own performance and hopefully comparing it to others who have already succeeded. This is where getting a coach will absolutely be the most beneficial because sometimes being a getting a coach honestly doesn't help. This is when a coach really helps. So do that if it makes sense and it's free or just not too expensive. Worst case scenario, just get any friend. Even if they're not an expert, just another pair of fresh eyes to give extra insight it can honestly help a lot of the time. Okay, so that was the first way. The second way people phrase themselves being in a rut to me is, all right, Sky, I know what I need to do to improve. I just can't seem to do it. All right, you see this a lot with tests, for example. You know, as a student, you might be familiar with studying a lot for a test just to forget everything the moment you walk in the classroom door. Or maybe you know exactly how to deliver a great speech. You know all the techniques, you know everything, but you just turn into a stammering mess the moment you walk on the stage. In this case, there is no problem with your vision of success. You know exactly what you need to do. The problem is in the execution. I found that this is almost always one of a few things. It's either an issue of lack of preparation, lack of confidence, or lack of experience. I noticed that, for example, I always get nervous if I feel I haven't prepared enough. I've spoken in front of major clients and millionaires without a problem, but if I feel like I'm presenting information that I haven't properly prepared, or that I haven't considered in every possible circumstance or considered follow-up questions, I will get very nervous. Like I'll go from rock solid, no problem, people think I'm like the most confident person ever, to if I'm not prepared enough or I don't feel like I'm prepared enough, I'll literally like have my voice shake. I'm, I, I get that nervous. Uh, but then, you know, maybe an hour later, later, I'll have an even more important meeting and I'll be fine because I totally prepared for that. So if it's preparation, you're in luck because preparing is easy. It's probably the easiest fix you can possibly do. You just prepare more, right? If you can't seem to shake a bad aim habit, even though you know it's wrong, a couple hours drilling it out of yourself in practice mode will take care of it 99% of the time. Now, maybe that's not the problem. Maybe you're totally prepared, practice a lot. Maybe then the issue is lack of confidence. For example, someone who has been in silver just casually for like five seasons in a row, who just now decides that they want to take it seriously and get better, will have a very difficult time seeing themselves as even having the ability to be a gold player because they've been silver for, for, for their entire life, essentially. <laughs> well, their entire, <laughs> ever since they started playing Overwatch. Uh, even if they know everything they need to know and practice everything they need to practice, they might still just not be confident or believe in themselves. Same with anything, really. Uh, having self-confidence is a whole topic on its own, though, so I don't have time to go in depth here, but I will give you one trick. This is the best scenario where actually hyping yourself up and doing the whole visualize yourself succeeding trick can help. You know, play some hyped music and rationally explain to yourself that you prepared more. Don't lie to yourself, right? You you will be able to know if you're lying to yourself. So don't lie to yourself. Actually logically explain to yourself that, hey, you know, I've prepared more. I've learned more. I'm more experienced than all these people I'm competing against. I'm gonna crush them. Or if it's something that's not so competitive, like, I don't know, maybe you're trying to stick to a healthy diet, then again, explain to yourself how dumb you'll be, how just silly you'll be to sacrifice your physical well-being 
for the, I don't know what, 10 second high of a bag of cookies. Like I said, I don't have enough time for a full discussion on self-confidence. That's like a, a book's worth of stuff. But the idea is to hype yourself up enough that by the time the hype wears off, you've completed whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. And you know, you'll have a success that you can truly be confident in for tomorrow or the future. And sometimes it's not preparation and it's not confidence. It's a lack of experience. In a game, this is pretty easy to overcome because you have an unlimited amount of tries, but it, even then it isn't that simple. Maybe you've been playing Overwatch for three years, but just now you're trying to play seriously and try to rank up and play competitively. It's a totally different experience, right? So you'll have to take time to adjust. Just don't give up to the bad feelings of an experience and push through it because eventually you'll be totally comfortable. Same thing with tournament play. You know, you could have been playing in grand math, you could have been top 500 player for three years. You play your first tournament, you're gonna to be nervous. You're not gonna play very well, right? No matter how much you've played at theoretically just as high of a level. So you'll need to play several tournaments before you're fully comfortable with it. For something like, I don't know, public speaking or a stage performance, getting experience isn't so easy, unfortunately. You can't just perform on stage every day to practice unlimited amounts of times. Sure, you can practice your speech or your song by yourself, but it just isn't the same as when you're in front of an audience. So there, it's hard. You just need to try to get as many reps in as you can, as many small time gigs, preferably as you can, before you do any sort of big ticket or high stakes performance. Practicing a speech in front of 10 people is still pretty darn good practice for doing a speech in front of 100 people. Or if it's a test in school, for example, you can get a person or a group, like a study group, they do this all the time, to administer strict mock exams for you and take them seriously in order to get used to the pressure of the real exam. At the end of the day, a lot of things can cause you to fail execution despite knowing theoretically what you're supposed to do. I gave the most likely culprits and solution, but it's something, uh, again, I'll have to talk about more in the future because it's such a big topic. Or you'll have to do your own research on the side because you know, it's very specific person to person. Now, last, but absolutely not least, so don't turn it off yet, guys. The final way people phrase the issue of not being able to improve is simply, Sky, I've tried to get better, but nothing I do works. Or Sky, I've tried to get better, but I'm still only bronze. Something like that. Now, some people just aren't good at expressing themselves. And sometimes if I dive deeper, it winds up being one of the issues I talked about earlier, but chances are very high if it's phrased like this, this individual simply just missed the mark entirely and hasn't followed the process of visualizing their goal. For someone to just say, you know, something as simple as I try to get better, but I'm not, that means that they don't even have a target. They don't even know where they're going, right? They, they don't even know what success looks like. If they did, then they would have a more specific problems, again, like one of the ones I talked about earlier. You see this a lot with relationships, actually, is a, is a good example. Oh man, especially, yeah, especially relationships. Uh, you know, vague statements of how people just want things to get better or how things, you know, they just didn't work out. But this plagues every industry and every skill set. Now, if you're totally clueless and you're just expecting to throw hours into something, yeah, I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll just throw hours into it, just throw raw effort in something and you expect to get better and you're frustrated because you're not, well, obviously you're not going to, right? Take a step back and start from square, run, uh, from square one. Do research, figure out what it looks like to get to where you wanna be, make a roadmap and try to get there. Chances are it won't be a seamless journey. It's not gonna be, you know, you're not just gonna do that and boom, oh, there you go, it's easy. But at least you'll have specific actionable problems instead of, I don't know, it's just not happening. That's really always the goal. Once you can get your problem to an actionable state where instead of you're just saying, I don't know, it's just, I just can't do it. You're actu you actually have a specific problem. Like I am trying to do X, but I'm just failing the execution when I'm under high stress, right? That's a very specific thing. Like you can solve that. You can't solve, I don't know, I'm just not getting better, right? Uh, and, th and this is also where people fall into the trap of believing in geniuses or talent. I might tell someone, oh, well, you know, here, look at these three people, they all did this and they succeeded, so try researching some of their processes. And I've actually gotten this response before of, oh, you know, they're just they're just really smart or they're, they're just really talented or their families were really rich or whatever it is. Now, yes, some people are simply not applicable to your scenario. Simple as that. For example, if you wanna be a YouTuber, studying how PewDiePie does things, probably not gonna help. 
right? Interesting, interesting to know about, interesting history, but he obviously is in a way different situation in a different time period when he started than you are. And that affected his strategy and that affects his strategy today. So it's just, it's just not gonna help you a lot, right? To emulate him. If you wanna get a job, don't compare yourself to applicants who have Harvard degrees or don't compare yourself to the person whose dad owns the company, you know? Compare yourself to people who are on a level playing field with you. Or if you do compare people who are in a different scenario than you, adjust, right? Understand that and say, okay, well, I'll take that and I'll adjust it so that it makes more sense for me. And honestly, I also just wanna say before I, before I close this out, don't feel pressured that you have to be better. You know, I think personally, I'm an overly competitive person. I can't even find motivation to do anything unless it's a contest. It's not necessarily a good thing. It's something I need to work on sometimes because obviously not everything in life is a contest, right? You, you probably aren't like that. And you shouldn't feel like you're worthless just because someone's higher ranked than you or richer, or prettier, and you shouldn't feel like a failure if you don't hit the mark. People are worth more than any one attribute, and you know you have the potential to accomplish great things no matter where you are in life. And great things don't just mean winning a big tournament or building a billion dollar corporation. Think about what you value, whether it's being a good friend, or a good parent, or a good teammate, and be proud of your accomplishments. If passion drives your goals, the journey will be just as fun, if not more fun, than the destination. All right, guys, thank you all for watching. You're one of the best communities the internet has to offer, so never forget to keep staying positive and have a great day. See you next time.